Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again with week four predictions here in the NFL, and we're going to kick this thing right off Thursday, 8.20 p.m. on Fox NFL Network Amazon Prime video. It is the Minnesota Vikings coming in with a 1-1-1 record at the L.A. Rams, who are sporting a spiffy 3-0 record. So some thoughts I have on this game is, uh, were the Vikings just caught in a trap game last week with the Bills, or are they actually declining? You know, it's kind of hard to tell since this league is a week-by-week -week league, but uh, they, they look like crap last week. And speaking of teams uh, that are involved in this game, the L.A. Rams were rolling on offense, but their defense is now suddenly questionable, missing Aqib Tlaib and Marcus Peters. And another question I've got for you guys is in a shootout, who do you got, Jared Goff or Kirk Cousins? I'm personally going to take Goff in that offense, and that's my pick for this game. So there you have it. Next up on Sunday, we kick things off on 1 p.m. on Fox. It's the New York Jets at 1-2 and two and the Jacksonville Jaguars at 2-1. and one. So is the Jags offense just bad or are they just bad against Tennessee? Uh, because the Titans seem to always play the Jags well. And that game last week was tough. It was tough sledding from start to finish. And the Jags just uh, they came out on the receiving end of a loss. And that sucks to say. Because, I, it really, honestly, they should not have lost that game. I think that if, what's his face, the starting quarterback there, not Mariota, the other guy, if he had played, then they would have walked. The Jaguars would have walked all over the Titans, but Mariota's gritty. He's a good, good kid. And the Jets, are they just a flash in the pan, like a one-hit wonder? Or are they just working out the kinks of their offense? You know, I don't know. Maybe they're a decent team. I guess we'll have to wait a few more weeks to find out. But uh, I, I like the Jags in this game. I'll go with them. The Jets they haven't shown me enough to beat an elite defense like this. Next, 1 p.m. on CBS. It's the 3-0 Miami Dolphins against the 1-2 New England Patriots. Yes, I just said that sentence. So can the Dolphins continue their winning ways while remaining under the radar? If they beat New England in this game... Is it like a thing now? Do we just have to accept that the Dolphins are good? Or do we still, you know, not quite give them the recognition they deserve? Um, you know, I, it's it's such a tough call. But uh, it, another thing, is the, the is the Patriots dynasty finally crumbling? Or is this just, or is this just a regular uh, Bill Belichick September? Excuse me. You know, you, I don't know. You, you never know. Uh... Like I said earlier, this league is so weak to weak, but the Patriots have not looked good at all through two the, these past two weeks. Week one, they look like the Patriots. Week two, and then week three, okay. There's something wrong here if, if you get beat by that team, by that Lions team. There's something critically wrong with your squad. I don't... I, yeah, you know, I don't buy it. I don't buy the whole, it's just Belichick using September as an extension of the preseason. You're in the regular season now, and every game matters. I don't care if you're the Tom Landry Cowboys, the Vince Lombardi Packers, the Mike Ditka Saints, <laughs> or the Bill Belichick New England Patriots. I don't care who you are. Every game in this league matters, and they should be taking it a lot more seriously than they are. And if they don't, they're going to get caught off guard by the Dolphins, who I've got winning this game. You heard me right. Next up on Fox, we have the 2-1 and one Eagles against the 2-1 and one Titans. And uh, is, is Carson Wentz rusty, or was he just not as good anymore? I guess we'll find out this week. The, this Titans defense is going to have to pitch a near shutout like they did against uh, Jacksonville if they want to have a chance against the Eagles. And I'm, I'm so... You know, as a fan of the NFC East, I keep hearing about this great, explosive Philadelphia Eagles offense, but I'm wondering where the explosion is. Where is this offense I was promised? <laughs> you know, I've, I've had to hear about it ever since February, and it hasn't shown up under Nick Foles. It didn't show up last week with Carson Wentz back. Is it going to show up this week against a good defense? I guess we'll find out, but I don't think so. I'm taking the Titans in this game. Next up on CBS, it's the 0-3 Texans against the 1-2 and Indianapolis Colts. Uh, my big takeaway from last week's game against uh, with the Colts and the Eagles is 
I know for a fact that the Colts don't trust Andrew Luck's arm because they brought in Jacoby Brissett to throw that Hail Mary at the end of the game. I don't care what their coaching staff says. I don't care what their management says. There is no way that you 100% trust Andrew Luck's arm and you think he's completely healthy and then trot Jacoby Brissett out for that Hail Mary. There's no way you do it. And I know Brissett has an arm, and he nearly chucked that thing too far out of the end zone. But if Andrew Luck, if they really were so confident in him, they would have given him that opportunity, and they didn't. And I think that's an indictment on Andrew Luck. My my main thing with the Texans is they've been playing well. They've been playing really well, but they just can't seem to find a way to win. I I don't I can't figure that out for the life of me. You know, they they played a, a pretty good game against the Giants in the second half last week, but I guess there's there's your problem. You got to play four quarters of acceptable ball, and they only played a half of decent football. And like I said, they're going to need four quarters of it. And as sad as it is to say, I don't see this Texans defense doing much, even against this poor Indianapolis Colts offense. And it's going to fall on the shoulder of Deshaun Watson. Can he kick it into gear and show the flashes that he showed last year and be that quarterback everybody thought he was going to be? I guess we'll find out. I'm going to take the Texans in this game just on sheer fact that I hate the Colts. And uh, picking the Indianapolis Colts will be the equivalent of me killing myself. And I don't think that's going to happen, so I'll take the Texans in this game. Next up on CBS, it's the one and two Bills and the one one and one Green Bay Packers. So are the Bills legit with Josh Allen at quarterback? I say nay. I say they just caught the uh, Vikings in a in a sticky situation in a trap game, and they just outplayed them. And I don't think that Josh Allen is better than Aaron Rodgers. I don't think he's better than any of the other Week One. Well, maybe he's better than Josh Rosen, but he's certainly not better than Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield. And uh, he's facing, a, a, right now anyway, a below-average Packer defense that if he doesn't look good against, I think that we can raise some serious flags against Josh Allen as a quarterback. But is Aaron Rodgers more hurt than he and the team is letting on? That's the big question. Because if he is, then this team's got a lot to worry about. But if he is healthy, then he will be fine. Well, if he's slowly approaching becoming healthy, he will be fine. The Packers will be fine. But even in this kind of weird flux state where he's hurt, but uh, he can still play. Excuse me, I just had to yawn again. But uh, I, I, th- I think the Packers will be fine. I'll take them in this game, and they'll go to 2-1-1. One, and one. Next up on Fox, it's Lions at 1-2 and two and Cowboys at 1-2. and two. And I think the Lions look absolutely unbeatable after dismantling the Patriots. And the Cowboys have zero offense to speak of through four week, three weeks. And their defense is entirely overrated the way they got picked apart systematically by that real bad Seahawks offense. And it's really laughable that the commentators picked, Cowboy, picked the Dallas Cowboys last week as they're upset against the Seahawks. Upset? Are you kidding me? The way that they hype up this Dallas Cowboys team with a really bad quarterback, an overrated running back, a terrible offensive line, no wide receivers, and an extremely overrated defense that can't rush the passer, and it can't cover anyone deep. It's a, it's a, it's a fact. That, that team, that Dallas Cowboys team, is at most a middle-of-the-pack team. They will finish with one of the worst records in football probably in that 5-11 and 11 range. I don't think they're very good. I think they're a piss-poor team and a, and a sad excuse for an NFL football team, and the Lions should have no trouble whatsoever going into Jerry World and picking apart the Cowboys the way they did the Patriots. Next up on Fox, it'll be the Buccaneers at 2-1 and one and the Bears at 2-1. And, one. and um, I think Fitzmagic is dead. I know that second half on Monday night was was pretty legendary, but it wasn't quite Aaron Rodgers because he couldn't he couldn't put him away. He had a three and out on that that last drive the Buccaneers had, and that's just unacceptable when you're trying to win a football game. And uh, the Bears defense I think is really good, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have 
the first ranks the first ranked offense in the entire NFL and they have the 31st ranked defense and the Bears have a bad offense but I believe a top 5 defense so where does push go to shove and, and you know it, it, it's so tough to pick these kinds of games here because do you pick offense in this situation or do you pick defense most of the time you want to pick the defense and I think that's what I'm going to do here I'll pick the Bears but it'll surprise me uh, if Fitzpatrick and the Buccaneers come out and have one of those 400 yard passing games again and Ryan Fitzpatrick broke the record with the most 400 yard passing games to open uh, in, in a three game stretch ever three straight and that's just ridiculous coming from Ryan Fitzpatrick but hey we got another game to look at, and that is the 1 p.m. on CBS game between the 2-1 and one Cincinnati Bengals and the 1-2 and two Atlanta Falcons. And I think these two teams are both middle of the pack, but uh, it's going to come down to who wins in a shootout, and I think the Falcons' um, offense is a pretty good group. But I don't think their defense is very good, especially with all those injuries. And uh, I'll take the Bengals in this game because I think they're healthier. And just a just a hair more explosive on offense, just a hair. Next up on Fox at 4:05 p.m. it'll be the Seattle Seahawks at one and two, and the Arizona Cardinals at 0 and three. So the Arizona Cardinals rank dead last, 32nd in offense, and uh, see they'll they'll start Josh Rosen. And I don't think that'll help. I don't think it will help one bit. David Johnson can't run the football. He looks completely lost behind that offensive line. And the passing game was just non-existent with poor Sam Bradford, and it won't change with Josh Rosen. And Seattle should win this game by at least two scores, at least. That's how bad I think the Cardinals are right now. They're just in a tailspin, and it's going to take a lot to get them out of that rut. So I'm going to stick with Seattle going into Arizona and picking apart the Cardinals. Next up on 4 on Fox at 4.05, it's the 1-1-1 Cleveland Browns and the 0-3 Oakland Raiders. So is John Gruden already on the hot seat? I mean, Raiders fans are so unbelievably fickle. They signed the, the man to a 10-year deal. A 10-year deal. That doesn't mean playoffs in the first year. That means you have to build this roster up by breaking it down. And I think the only reason why Gruden has all these old guys on the roster is because there's no young guys to fill in those spots. And the old guys will be great veteran presences in the locker room to galvanize the group. And I, th I think the Raiders will be better years down the line. And I think that they're just in a rebuild phase. They didn't have the cap space for Khalil Mack. And frankly, you cannot dish all your money out to a defensive player. It's just it's not a thing that you can do in this league. You have to focus on your quarterback and your offensive line and then sparingly use your money on skill positions on offense and then you know put a hefty chunk into that defense because that's what the Raiders are lacking in right now but I don't think John Gruden's on the hot seat uh it's kind of laughable to me that Raiders fans are already calling for his head after only three weeks of ball into a 10-year deal so just just give it some time Raiders fans you're a little ridiculous but I think Baker Mayfield is on fire after that performance on Thursday night. I don't know any way this Raiders defense can slow him down. And uh, I think the Browns will win. They'll go to 2-1-1. One, and, one. and that's kind of crazy. That's, that's something I didn't expect to say going into this year. But I'm kind of happy I am. So I'm taking the Browns. Next up, 425, CBS. 2-1 New Orleans Saints at 1-2 New York Giants. The Saints defense, questionable at best. They're getting banged up. They don't look like that group from last year. And that's a that's a big concern for me. My my next question is, can the Giants offensive line hold up at all? Last week against the Texans, they held up pretty well. But, excuse me, young man over there playing right tackle, Chad Wheeler, uh, he played a pretty good game against J.J. Watt. Sure, he let up three or four sacks or whatever it was, but he played a great game against JJ Watt one of the one of the game's best and the guy who's en route to the Hall of Fame at some point in his career but um really when we think about it 
Uh, ahead as a bullet point, Bree should torch the Giants secondary, but the New York Giants, I believe, still have the second ranked pass defense in professional football. And that's kind of insane to me that the Giants are 1-2 and two, but still have a pretty good defense. And I think that this game might be reminiscent to the game that these two teams had a few years ago where it was a 51-49 to 49 shootout. I think this game could get high scoring like that and could look like the, uh, the Atlanta and New Orleans game from last week. And that'll be fun. I just hope the Giants come out on the winning end of things. And as much as I don't think the Giants are going to win this game, they're my team. We're playing at home. So I'll pick the New York Giants to beat the New Orleans Saints. Next up, 425 p.m. CBS. The 1-2 and two Niners against the 1-2 and two Chargers. No Jimmy G means no chance for the 49ers. I'm taking the Chargers. Next up, 8.20 p.m. on NBC. Excuse me, it is Sunday night football between the 2-1 and one Ravens and the 1-1-1 one, one, and one Steelers. I think the Steelers are overrated. I think they're horrible. I'm going to throw that out there. I think they're bad. And uh, I think they just capitalized on Ryan Fitzpatrick doing Ryan Fitzpatrick things on Monday night. And they should be um, handily defeated by the Ravens, who I think are... You know, I'm not a fan of the Ravens. I hate the Baltimore Ravens, but I can't deny how good they are. I think that they're very good now. And I know that's a complete flip-flop from what I said maybe a week or two ago. But I think that they've gotten a lot better, and I like the Ravens in this game. Uh, So I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens, and hopefully they handle the Steelers with a little bit of certainty, I guess I could say. Next up, it's Monday, 15 p.m. on ESPN. The Kansas City Chiefs at 3-0 take on the Denver Broncos at 2-1. and one. My bullet points here are Chiefs have a lethal deadly offense. Case Keenum can't, stern, can't stop turning the ball over, excuse me. But the Chiefs have the 32nd ranked defense, so something's got to give there. If Case Keenum's a turnover machine, will he be able to, to reel that in against the 32nd ranked defense in all of pro football? For Broncos fans, you better hope so, because this Kansas City offense should light up that Broncos defense and I don't think it's going to be pretty I like the Chiefs in this game and I think their offense is just going to be so overbearing that it it just it's just going to smother the Broncos so I'll take Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City Chiefs so there you have it ladies and gentlemen in 20 minutes or less I've broken down an entire week of football and I'm very tired so uh, as, as you could probably tell I was slurring a little bit it's because I'm half asleep on my feet So uh, just bear with me, and hopefully I'm not this tired when I record Week 5 predictions. (laughs) So thank you guys for bearing with me for 20 minutes, and I hope you enjoy the games this weekend, this Thursday, this Monday, and I will catch you guys next week for Week 5 predictions. Until then, it's been real, it's been me, it's your boy Hobo, and I will catch you guys in the next video.